I'm Martha. Um, I'm a first year PhD student at Queen's University Belfast and um, I'm funded by DARA. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about my first two chapters of my PhD. My overall PhD title is Pollination and Pest Control, the Dual Ecosystem Services of Hoverflies. Um, I'm going to start by giving you guys a bit of a kind of background of the overview of um, the global context of pollinator populations and their associated services, um, and then talk to you a bit about where hoverflies fall into this and why currently they are seen as a forgotten group of pollinators, and then go into my first two chapters. So pollination is fundamental to the sexual reproduction of many plants and is therefore an essential ecosystem service in both natural and agricultural environments. 90% of modern angiosperms require an animal, for, um, an animal vector for pollination. Insects provide a substantial proportion of, of these services with significant contributions to global food security and the global economy. 70% of major commercial crops and 35% of um, global food production requires insect pollination, which has been translated to 153 billion euros per year. However, note that this statistic came out in 2009, so it is much more likely to be upwards of 200 to 250 billion. So, unsurprisingly, the reports of dramatic declines of pollinator populations has elicited widespread concern in both the scientific community and also in the media. Agricultural intensification is invariably mentioned in these analyses and has been identified as the primary threat to global pollinator populations. This is through the degradation of foraging and nesting resources, which are vital for pollinator survival. Although in the drivers of insect population declines are pretty well defined, um, significant taxonomic data deficits exist. This is mainly due to an overall focus on honeybees and bumblebees. But we know that diversity within an ecosystem underpins its robustness to withstand anthropogenic and environmental pressures. Hoverflies are an essential component to this dynamic. They're known to have a significant ecosystem service provision throughout their life cycle, as not only are they adult, as not only are they pollinators as adults, but they're also biological pest control agents at the larval stage. So I'll give you a brief background on um, just hoverflies in general. So they're um, from Orderdiptera, the family Cerfidae. Um, they're known to be relatively species rich with over 6,000 species globally, 890 species in Europe, 283 species on the British Isles, and on the island of Ireland, there are 181 known um, species. Their prevalence and abundance suggests to us that what they may lack in specialization, they are likely to make up for in numbers. However, they're grossly under-researched within the context of their um, ecosystem services, and so are often regarded as a forgotten group of pollinators. In October 2022, the first ever large-scale study Europe, for European hoverfly populations published that over a third of European hoverfly species are threatened directly with extinction, and over half are, de are detrimentally impacted by agricultural intensification. So it's likely that these research shortfalls that I've previously discussed are likely to be carried into the conservation management of popul po pollinator populations. And, and so these findings highlight the absolute necessity for the de development of, better, of a better understanding of hoverfly populations and their ecosystem services. However, I would like to note that to date, no uh, overview of the conservation assess of uh, no conservation assessment has been conducted for Irish populations. However, I do know that the um, red list is due to be published at some point soon. So this brings me on to my first two chapters. 
So the aims for my first two chapters are to document the behavior of hoverflies through video observation and quantify the behavioral variation between species. So this refers to my first chapter specifically. My second chapter will then bring in this idea of um, investigating the pollination efficiency within hoverfly populations and how pollination efficiency varies between species within the context of their pollination behavior. With my overall objective being to evaluate the extent to which species specific behavioral mechanisms and variations are related to pollination efficiency. Um, my study site for both of these are, is going to be in the botanical gardens in the greenhouses and it's going to be a space that looks a bit like this. Um, however, my efficiency experiments are going to have a sort of mesh um, fruit growing tent to create a controlled um, exclusive environment. So my chapter one, I'm going to be looking at um, the naturally occurring hoverfly populations um, within an urban population. Um, and I'm going to be documenting the behavior of hoverflies uh, through video analysis. So I'm going to be using GoPros with a macro lens, um, which will be focused on flowers. So my video analysis will be specific for hoverflies when they are landed on a flower. Um, these individuals will then be um, caught and taken back to the labs at Queen's um, and for identification and body pollen analysis. So the, the high kinds of behavioral mechanisms that um, I'm going to be looking at are things like flower visitation frequency, the total time spent on flower, um, the contact time with the stigma. Um, but I'm also going to be looking at grooming and cleaning behavior, um, the position relative to the stigma and pollen manipulation, um, because these behaviors are seen to be species specific. Um, there are certain species that are known to be nectar stealers, so they will land on a flower, but they will only land on a petal and they will have no interaction um, with the pollen. Whereas individuals like this one here, this is just taken with um, an iPhone camera. So um, sorry, it's not super, super clear. Hopefully my ones will be um, a little bit more clear, but you can see that it's manipulating the pollen there. Um, so the interaction is thought to um, increase the pollination efficiency of these individuals. So that brings me on to my second chapter. So I'm going to be using two commercially reared um, hoverfly species. Uh, the two species that I'm going to be using are Episurphus boltiatus, so the marmalade hoverfly, and Spheriphoria rupelli. Um, and these are going to be bought uh, in the form of pupae. Um, and when they emerge as adults, I'm going to then release them into that um, uh, fruit growing tent um, within the, the um, greenhouses. So pollination efficiency refers to the relative ability of a forager to successfully pollinate flowers per unit time. And you measure this through um, conducting what's called single visit pollen deposition experiments. These are standardized um, experiments that have been conducted multiple times for um, uh, bumblebees and also honeybees. They have actually also been conducted a few times um, with hoverflies, um, but never within the context of their behavior. The successful pollination is measured specifically by the seed set or the fruit set or the developed pollen tubes. Um, in the case of my experiments, I'm going to be measuring the um, seed set and the fruit set. And then pollination efficiency is calculated by the single visit pollen deposition times the visitation rate. So to conduct these experiments, um, before, so while the um, flowers are in bud, so they haven't bloomed yet, um, you bag all of the inflorescences. And there are three experimental treatments that are going to be applied. The first experimental treatment is the open experimental treatment um, where when the um, experiment's going to be conducted, I will then take that bag off and leave it open for insect um, pollination, in this case, hoverfly pollination. The second is my positive control. Um, so this is hand pollination. It represents the maximal level of um, pollination. Um, and then my third is the negative control. Um, so I'm just gonna keep that bag on 
um, and it's um, it represents minimal levels of pollination. So um, where no insect has ever visited um, this uh, flower. Um, so within this confined space, I'm going to have supplementary plants and then experimental plants. The supplementary plants essentially just ensure cross pollination. Um, and so you will have a um, period at the beginning where um, you release the hoverflies into the area um, and allow for the individuals to land on the supplementary plants before they can then land on the experimental plants. And at that stage, that's when we take the bags off the experimental plants. Um, and then these ones, so with my first treatment, um, I'm going to set up my GoPros so that um, the behavior of the hoverflies while they're landed um, on the flower is going to be documented. Um, and I'm gonna analyze that um, video footage um, in the way that I've um, described to you guys um, for my first chapter. So um, the measurements I'm gonna be taking, so behavioral measurements, the visitation rate. So this is just the number of flowers that are visited um, in 10 minutes. I'm gonna do this per bloom. Um, and then the seed set and the fruit set. So a kind of overview of what I'm gonna be doing this summer. Um, so I'm gonna do my um, efficiency experiments with blueberries and then strawberries and raspberries. Um, and then wildflowers are going to be used for my chapter one. So my behavior only study. Um, so obviously, because I'm in my first year and I um, have quite seasonal field work, haven't got any data for you guys yet, um, but hopefully next year when we meet, I'll be able to present my findings to you. Um, but yeah, I just want to open the floor for questions or any kind of discussions or points. Thank you. Hey, I might be getting ahead of myself here, but are you looking for sites that you can apply this research in the field? Yes, absolutely. For my second field season, I am very much looking for sites, especially I'd like to um, look at efficiency within the context of um, apple orchards. Um, so I've looked a little bit at the experimental apple orchards that um, AFPI have, so that's maybe one idea. Um, but yeah, I was... From an agricultural field-based perspective? Yeah, absolutely, definitely, because I'll be looking at um, management practices as well, so comparing current management practices that are mostly focused on bumblebees and honeybees um, and the support of those populations um, and looking at how um, they are or whether they even are supporting hoverfly populations as well. Yeah. Great, thanks. <laughs> I was just uh, wondering what was behind the decision to use uh, that the surface of the office and these firefly as the model organisms for you? Um, so it's kind of what's available to us, really. Um, those are the two um, species that are used, they're commercially reared um, and are ordered by um, commercial kind of companies within the UK. Um, but those species are used for their pest control services rather than their pollination services. So they're aphidophagus. So basically, um, they're used to control aphid infestations. Um, and the botanical gardens actually do use those two um, species as well. So I know that I'm not going to kind of upset them by introducing something that they don't really know whether they want to have there. So we've got uh, one more Yes, because then yeah, we'll move on to the next slide.